In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In today's Gospel, our Lord is reminding his disciples of his approaching passion and death. Christ reminded his followers many times while he was on earth that his mission here on earth was that he should die for us so that we may be saved. He tells the apostles that he will go to the Father and that they shall not see him, but that after a time, a time of sorrow, they will see Christ again and they shall rejoice. And this joy that they will have will not be taken from them. Our Lord is here promising the disciples that they will see him after his death. He is giving them some hope, something to hope for after his crucifixion and burial. Christ is also giving us hope for our salvation, hope that after a short time of sorrow here on earth, we may enter heaven and may rejoice eternally. A Christian is a follower of Christ. But we can say more than this. We can say that a Christian is another Christ. The more and more we become Christ-like, the closer our lives are to Christ's life, the closer we are to being sharers in his eternal reward, which, in the eternal reward which he won for us on the cross. We know that in order to become like Christ, we have to practice the virtues. There is one virtue, however, one that is easily overlooked, that assists us in the practice of each of the other virtues. This virtue makes us Christ-like in a special way. This virtue is magnanimity. Magnanimity is a virtue which inclines man to perform great works in every virtue, works which are deserving of high honors. You can call this virtue a catalyst. It drives man to accomplish something that is difficult. Now why would this virtue especially make us Christ-like? This is easy to understand if we examine the crucifixion. The crucifixion was the great work of our Lord's life. Jesus Christ was born to die, to die for all men to reopen the gates of heaven for the human race. It was a very difficult thing to accomplish. Remember our Lord in the Garden of Olives, sweating blood, asking his Father to remove the chalice, if such be his will. Now Christ was not a weakling by any means. Remember that he slept through a storm in a boat with the apostles, who were fishermen, and they were terrified for their lives. Christ fasted in the desert 40 days and 40 nights, having nothing to eat during this time. Christ also drove the sellers from the temple with a whip. He overturned their tables, laden with goods, and the sellers all fled from him, fearing his just anger. How terrible indeed must have been the crucifixion to cause our Lord to sweat blood and pray to his Father, that this chalice be removed from him, if possible. Yet, terrifying and hard as it was, our Lord gave us the greatest example of magnanimity and underwent his cruel torture and death. If we want to be like Christ, we must acquire this virtue. <clears throat> All of the saints, being Christians, are reflections of Christ. They reflect Christ in the same way mirrors reflect the sun. Mirrors can be large, they can be small, they can be of, of uh, ver various uh, reflecting properties. Some can reflect more, some less. But each reflects the sun. When we look at, the, at a mirror that's aimed at the sun, we see the sun. If we look into the life of each saint, we see this virtue of magnanimity in everything they did. You should study their lives and watch for this virtue. See how it helped them to do what they did. As an example, Saint Maria Goretti was a young girl, attacked and tempted, but she resisted strongly, 
and she won the palm of martyrdom. She remained pure through magnanimity. And then, as she was dying in terrible pain, she was operated upon without anesthesia because the doctors thought that this would, that this would speed up her death or even kill her. She had many wounds, and she was in great pain, and she forgave her attacker. How difficult this must have been to forgive the very one responsible for her current bleeding, suffering, dying state. Again, we see magnanimity. Another example of Saint Joseph, who is commemorated today in the Mass. He was waked in the night by an angel and told to flee with Mary and the child Jesus into Egypt because of Herod's jealousy. Saint Joseph rose up immediately and did as he was told. Now imagine that you yourself were told to rise and take your family into a foreign land, to do so immediately, to leave your house, your property, job, relatives, friends, to leave everything behind and flee, and to flee that instant. A very difficult command. Yet, magnanimity drove St. Joseph to rise and do the angel's bidding. How does this virtue apply to our own lives? Do you have to practice this virtue in order to be saved? This is a question that may come to mind. After all, the Catechism says that we are to know, love, and serve God here on earth. It makes no mention of doing great things. You might ask, and who am I to assume that I can do great things? Imagine for a moment that you just died. Your body is cooling down, it is breaking down, and your soul can no longer stay there, it leaves the body. You are now before Christ at your particular judgment. You are seeing Christ again. You died in the state of grace. Your salvation is guaranteed. True, you may have to spend some time in purgatory, but you will be in heaven eventually. All your life, you were only concerned about not going to hell, just avoiding mortal sin, and now that is accomplished. But you are still at your judgment. Imagine that Christ, that Christ asks you the question, what have you done with all the opportunities to merit and to do good works that I gave you? How would you like to answer? How would you answer? You would like to answer, like the faithful servant, Lord, you have given me ten talents, and behold, I give you another ten over and above. You gave me the opportunity to do good works, and I did them because of your grace. You gave me difficult works to perform and assisted me in their accomplishment. All that you put before me, I accomplished. When you gave me a choice between a good work and a better work, I chose the better and the more difficult because I knew that I would have the help of your grace. But how would you really answer, truthfully? Maybe you would say, Lord, I have done as little as possible for my eternal salvation and for your glory. I saw great works and I fled, except when I saw that people would think better of me, or when I knew that I would get a better position or more material goods. You gave me a choice between a good work and a better, more difficult work, and I chose the good work because the better work was too hard and the good work was hard enough. I was not sure that you would give me the grace to accomplish great works. And why would I want to go through the trouble of working hard? All I have to do is avoid mortal sin. Obviously, the first answer is best. But do you really think that you could give that answer? 
There is a big difference between hoping that that will be your answer and and living as if it will be. Now, how do we practice this virtue? When does the opportunity arise? Is it a virtue that is only needed in rare circumstances, such as martyrdom? No, today, because of the state of the world and the crisis in the church, we have many, many opportunities to practice this virtue. Many have moved from other states or even from other countries in order to attend Mass regularly or have their children educated in a Catholic school. You have risen up like St. Joseph, not to protect the child Jesus, but to fly to him. Dressing modestly today is looked upon as odd or weird. Even dressing well is is, is looked upon as odd. Getting time off from work on Sunday is sometimes extremely difficult. Not to mention taking off the time for holy days of obligation, even taking off time in the morning just to go to Mass or in the evening to make the later Mass if your job goes later. These are only a few examples. There are many, many more. The world is so opposed to the Catholic culture that it is impossible not to practice this virtue, at least at times. For those of you who are praying and trying to figure out what God wants of you, whether it be the priesthood, the religious life, or the married state, keep this virtue in mind. No matter which state God has planned for you, you will need this virtue. As parents raising your children, you will be traveling against the grain. You will have much pressure from society to do what the world does. If you give in a little bit, you will, be, you will very likely give in all the way. It happens. And you will become liberal and worldly. You will be responsible for the ruin of your own lives and the lives of your children. Indeed, the rest of your family, perhaps for many generations, if you do not study this virtue in the lives of the saints, and practice it when opportunities arise. As religious, you will be cast off and shunned by the world, which cannot understand religious life and hates our Lord. Without magnanimity, you will forget your rule, your holy patron, and will even forget Christ, your spouse. You will affect those children placed under your care and will weaken them by your compromising attitude if you do not practice this virtue. As priests, you will have to contend not only with the world, which has lost all respect for God and his priests, but also with both the Novus Ordo clergy and members of groups in the traditional movement who work against the church, even while claiming to work with it, to work for it. Human respect will be a great temptation And without magnanimity, you will fall and will drag many, many souls with you far more than either the religious or the married could. Your responsibilities will be great and the consequences will be terrible if you do not have magnanimity. You do not want to answer at your particular judgment, Lord, I have not done great works. Instead, I have dragged many, many souls with me to hell. You do not want to answer that. If you already are in one of these states, think well. Do you have magnanimity? Do you practice it? Are you pusillanimous? Do you throw off hard works? Do you practice mortification? This is how you will improve in this virtue. This is how it will become stronger by little acts of self-denial, by doing little difficult things, you will prepare yourself to do the more difficult things that will be required of you in this life. Practice mortification, pray, read the lives of the saints. The saints are your examples. You won't find examples of magnanimity in the world. The world has 
lost all virtue. Magnanimity needs virtue to practice, so the world has no magnanimity. Even if great things materially are accomplished, don't look at them as examples. This is, this is not magnanimity. Read the lives of the saints. This cannot be stressed enough. The practice of this virtue will make you like Christ. It will make you a true Christian. Consider this virtue well and practice it when the opportunity arises. And, by the grace of God, after this present sorrow, you will, like Christ, see his Father and rejoice. And this rejoicing no man shall take from you. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.